Hiya, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hini. So today we are talking about another request video topic based on a question one of my beautiful subscribers asked. Um, the question was something along the lines of having Uranus natally in the third house and what that might mean for speech and communication. Really interesting question and I loved looking this one up. Because I keep getting comments about the length of my videos, <laughs> I'll try to keep this one as short as possible. I have scripted this one, so universe willing, you will all be okay with this one. First of all, what is Uranus? Like the discovery of the planets Neptune and Pluto, Uranus was also discovered much later than the other planets. Uranus is unique for its sideways tilted axis and in astrology as well Uranus is sort of interpreted as the oddball of the planetary archetypes. Uranus represents going against the flow, it represents rebellion, it represents doing things in a totally often previously unthought of way. Uranus is quirkiness, detachment, progress, technology, science, including astrology. Uranus is chaos, it's the anti-routine, it's the genius, the unpredictable, the unconventional, and it is also total real freedom. Uranus also represents collectivities and networks. You may know that Uranus is the secondary ruler of Aquarians, after their primary ruler, Saturn. This, to me, is why Aquarians are so similar to Capricornians at first. You know, serious, a bit distant, frank, but then all of a sudden the Aquarian will switch up on their sense of duty and do something shocking and confrontational. I love it. <laughs> but because of the many Uranian qualities possessed by the Aquarian, I think this is why it's often said that Aquarians actually get on well with Sagittarians, the latter Sagittarians also tending to prize freedom. The third house in astrology is basically Gemini's house. This house therefore contains all the themes and lessons that are somehow Gemini related, for example to do with localities, relativity, intelligence, skills, quick and short trips, and also other things such as siblings, hobbies and mental stimulation. The third house is also a personal house, dealing more with me or I themes. Having planets in the third house will mean much more personal powers when it comes to things, people and spaces immediately around you. It will mean much more power and focus on your personal hobbies and interests. It will also mean more of your powers come from your own personal way of relating. Gemini, like Aquarius, is an air sign. And so to put Uranus here is quite comfortable actually and very exciting, if not overwhelming. It could produce someone whose personal way of relating explodes and disseminates some big idea or message because Uranus also deals with mass disseminations. It could produce someone whose thoughts or inspirations within their locality actually revolutionize somehow or usher in something outstandingly interesting or mind-blowing. So let's see what this might mean for the speech and communication of someone with Uranus natally in the third house. When we talk about speech and communication in astrology, we absolutely must look to where Mercury is placed. However, what is going on in the third house natally is also important because again, this is the house of how you personally relate and how you are personally intelligent. Someone with Uranus in the third house may be a controversial communicator or at least their own way of relating is controversial. They may have a genius way of relating to things and people. They may have personal eureka moments just by looking at and engaging with what is immediately around them. Uranus in the third house can also make your locality quite abrupt. For example, disruptions and interruptions being frequent. When relating this to speech and communication, you may be the kind of person whose personal relating is also abrupt and unpredictable. Perhaps you don't speak much until there's this spark of something you're realizing, and then you're non-stop talking or just thinking 
obsessively about the many ideas that this spark has caused you to have. You could also be someone who interrupts others, <laughs> unable to contain your sense of a better or more progressive thing to say or do. At least inside, you get highly irritated by this compulsion to interrupt others who just aren't on your wavelength. Though you might not actually ever say or do something that acts on this irritation. Uranus in the third house may produce unconventional intelligence. For example, reading and understanding your surroundings based on totally new kinds of sign or signs just not considered by anyone else around you. You may not even be able to explain your methods but you still reach new progressive conclusions by engaging with your surroundings in this way. Because the third house also rules siblings, you may have a sibling or siblings who were or are somehow odd activists, martyrs, scientists, inventors, or even astrologers, or people highly into one or more of these things. And for some people, this may have affected the way you interacted with others as a kid in your neighborhood. It may have dragged you into very different situations than those of your counterparts. The way a Uranus in the third house person relates to things and people may be erratic. They could come off as very scatty, restless, and even flippant. Uranus in the third house also probably produces a hyper digital relator. Uranus rules all that is digital, and the third house is about everything that is local. And so this person is very hooked up to the digital localities that may include social media, online chat rooms and forums, and any other planes that quickly connect people and ideas, regardless of physical or other distances. Putting Uranus in Gemini's house could of course make the person obsessed with their phone or with the internet, or obsessed with following conspiracies online, or obsessed with finding out what the anti or the rebellious ideas are. Uranus in the third house may produce detachment from the locality. From an early age, there could have been a strong sense of alienation from the things, people, spaces around them, making their communication seemingly aloof. They might even have been unable for some reason to speak much with others, increasing a personal sense of isolation. The Uranus and third house individual might have quirky interests, hobbies or crafts, perhaps meaning that they were or they are limited when it comes to talking to others about these things. It could be things that no one really pays much attention to, or very unusual or niche hobbies, or some sort of craft where a lot of isolation or alone time is required. The way you communicate may be very free, progressive and open-minded somehow with this placement. Uranus in the third house suggests liberal or extremely unique surroundings and or an extremely unique way of relating to surroundings. This can make the individual highly capable of talking with just about anyone. Uranus in the third house may suggest communication through gadgets, devices, or some other sort of advanced method. They could be the kind of person always kind of saying, okay, Google, to their phone or device in order to understand and interact with their surroundings. Or they could be someone who's keen to just Google stuff that they've stumbled upon, whether they're indoors or outdoors. Finally, let's look at some famous people who have slash had this placement of Uranus in the third house, Natalie. First off is Albert Einstein, which I found pretty amazing. I mean, known for theories of relativity, it can't really get any more Uranus visiting the house of Gemini than that. Apparently, also in the 1930s, he suggested an alternative Big Bang theory, which is pretty out of this world and pretty rebellious. Britney Spears also has this placement. Now, she has so much going on in her third house, including her Mercury, Sun, Lilith, and Neptune, and the entire sign of Sagittarius, making her even more outgoing, rebellious, and just making so much magic out of the way that she personally relates. Even recently, she's made posts on her Instagram about astrology, and Uranus is the planet associated with astrology. Mark Zuckerberg has Uranus in the third house. His natal Uranus is retrograde, which can suggest more problems and setbacks, but once 
overcome such Uranian powers of this kind of individual can make for explosive results. Robbie Williams also has a retrograde Uranus in the third and I do recall as a kid a lot of the mothers in my hometown swooning over Robbie and his body and those Libran and Scorpionic energies of his third house. Not to mention that he's also a hard to miss Leo rising. Nelson Mandela had Uranus in the third house, also retrograde, and this incredible individual was also powered by a Sagittarius rising outlook on the world, as well as having Aquarius in the third house, and about a fifth of Pisces in that house as well. And as I mentioned earlier, Sag and Aquarius are cited as getting along well, because both of these archetypes are hard set on freedom. But Nelson Mandela also had Uranus in Aquarius, one of the parts of the birth chart where Uranus is said to be kind of at home, not to mention again Pisces, a little bit of Pisces in that house, a lot of dreaming as well. George Michael had Uranus in the third house, conjunct his part of fortune. And this is likely to create someone with highly unique and humanitarian uh, humanitarianism also by the way being associated with Aquarius but humanitarian ways of relating to their money their assets their lot I've mentioned probably in more than one video here that George Michael was said to be very charitable to random people and not at all in a showy way in fact people only really started to see this after his death he also has Virgo here and Mars conjunct Pluto making him not only unique in his way of relating but also someone strongly heroic and real when it comes to his both humble and humanitarian ways of thinking not to mention also his Mercury and Venus were conjunct in his 12th house adding an even more powerful divine sort of layer to his nature wherein his thoughts and his beautiful bountiful flows were also sort of hidden. Edith Piaf had her Uranus 13 degrees in Aquarius in the third house as with Nelson Mandela also having Uranus at home but also the number 13 signifies to me even more uniqueness and oddballness powers that both isolate but also uniquely transform the individual. Chris Martin has this placement and also Anthony Hopkins has this placement <laughs> and for Anthony Hopkins who has his Uranus retrograde in Taurus in the third house what better way to champion a kind of dark Taurian uniqueness than playing a cannibal character but also because this is Uranus we're talking about it's super unique I mean I can't think of any other fictional character like uh, the one that Anthony Hopkins played, Hannibal Lecter. I cannot think, I mean, wherever you have Uranus in your chart is where you are going to stand out and be completely unique. And in some cases, like with celebrities and politicians, really stand out in the world and disseminate. But yeah, <laughs> Torian uniqueness, cannibals. Um, Finally, Walt Disney had Uranus in the third house, as well as a host of other shares, including Scorpio, Mercury conjunct his part of fortune, his sun, and Sagittarius. So there's lots of chemistry there for both clever and dreamy investments in the way that someone with this kind of third house would personally relate. Alrighty, that is going to be this video and response to the request. Um, thank you very much for this request video. It was quite fun to look into. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one uh, very, very soon. Love ya.